time. Comes in different shapes, different sizes, fills differing wants and needs. All ticking with one consistent chorus. Give me more time. Time to spend with the family. Time to be creative. Time to work and time to relax. I guess the question then is this. What is time worth? And how do you want to invest it? You know, not so long ago and not so very far away from your neighborhood, there lived two lifelong friends, Joe Larson and Bert Adams, neighbors who carpool to and from the office every day. And every Sunday morning, rain or shine, Bert and Joe would meet religiously at 9.30 sharp to observe that most hallowed of sacred shared events. Golf. Bring your money. <laughs> but unlike the endless stream of previous outings, this morning was a little different. Bert, I've been thinking. I really need to make some extra money. I've been thinking about getting a part-time job. You keep putting like that, you'll have to sell your house. Two bucks. Don't you ever think about making extra money? Not as long as I've got you as a golfing partner. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I do. In fact, every time Holly and I balance the checkbook. I don't know about you, but I really have to do something. Yeah. So what do you do when your savings account's at an all-time low or non-existent? Carpeting and drapes that are threadbare, the refrigerators banging and clanging, credit card balances that are reaching the level of the national debt ceiling, not to mention college tuition just around the corner. Well, how do you balance your time? Time that's needed to earn that extra money? Time to spend with your family? What are your options? I could always get a part-time job at Old Man Truman's appliance store. I work there as a teenager. He makes me an offer every time I come in to buy a part to fix the washer or dryer. <laughs> Which is becoming more and more frequent. True. You know, I bet I could get him to give me eight bucks an hour. If I work 10 hours a week, that's $80. That's it's $350 a month. And I could start a daycare center. Well, the decision had been made, and it seemed like a good one. But no matter how many times Joe played the idea out in his mind, no matter how hard he tried, there just wasn't much to get excited about. Well, things were very different at the Adams house. Bert's Aunt Betsy had called earlier in the day while the boys were playing golf and asked Holly to join her for lunch. So what do you think? Interesting. And now there was Holly sharing with Bert the information Aunt Betsy had so carefully and patiently shared during the luncheon. Now let me see if I get this. We work consistent, steady, invest 10 hours a week, just like Joe and I talked about. Our goal is to find just two people who can benefit from these products, mm -hmm. excited as we are, we're also willing to invest 10 hours a week That's doing right. the same thing. Yeah, and based on our goal, three months to accomplish our task. Three months. That's around 130 hours. 130 hours. That's realistic. Yeah. We can do this. And we get to do it together. You are a genius. For Bert, the next morning couldn't come soon enough. He hadn't felt this alive in years. He couldn't wait to tell Joe that he'd found the answer to their problem. He had committed to invest 10 hours a week, consistent and steady, just like he and Joe had agreed. Flexible hours, great product, solid company, and do it with Holly. It was everything Joe and he were looking for. Here, write this down. We'll each be investing 10 hours in our new business, just like we agreed. Okay. And as soon as each of us finds two new people who are as excited as we are, they'll be investing 10 hours a week, too. Okay. Now, how many hours is that? That's 30 hours. Right, 30 hours of work done every week, and we only have to do 10, ten of it. Everybody wins. And on top of all that, we get to spend our extra 10 hours a week looking for solid folks like us, instead of working in some hole in the wall. Truman's a decent fellow. I'm sure he is, but he pays you a wage. Yeah. And who gets all the profits on his sales? He does. And how does he get people to come to his store? He advertises. And he sits on the school board. He's a deacon in his church. He joined the Rotary. And what does he say every time you run into him? 
He lifts the collar on your shirt and says, Looks like you need a new washing machine. Exactly. He sells good stuff, and so will we. But there is a huge difference. Here, take a look at this. A manufacturer makes a washing machine. Now, he sells it at a profit to a wholesaler. The wholesaler sells it at a profit to Truman. Now, Truman's going to sell it to a customer, and again, he's going to sell it at a profit. Now, out of this profit, he pays what? His rent, heating, electricity, advertising, a store manager, and Joe. Now, with all these middlemen, it's no wonder he can only afford to pay Joe $8 an hour. All the profit goes to guys like you and me who are out there doing all the work. We are the middlemen, the owners, the salespeople. We get the profit. How does Holly feel about it? Joe, it was her idea. Sally'd never do it. Now, what Bert didn't know was this. Joe went home and shared the information with Sally, just like Bert had explained to him. Bert invests 10 hours a week, for example, over a three-month period. And during that time, his goal is to find two quality people. The result, Bert invests 10 hours, plus his two new people invest 10 hours a week, totaling 30 hours a week. Now, for the next three months, Bert's goal is to help his people find two quality people each, or four additional people. The result, Bert invests 10 hours, plus his two people invest 10 hours each, plus their new people invest 10 hours each a week, totaling 70 hours a week. Now, that's leveraging the investment of your time. It didn't take long for Sally to see why Bert was so excited about the potential. But Joe, Joe had always prided himself on being practical, realistic, having that good old fashioned work ethic. You know, you work 10 hours, you get paid for 10 hours. After all, it was the honorable thing to do. And he held on that excuse for an entire year. Okay, I know you're dying to tell me, so go ahead, spit it out. Spit what up? <sighs> Every day you pick me up. You won't tell me how much money you're making. Nothing. But Sally, she's watching. And every night when I get home, I hear all about it. The Adams had two families over for barbecue tonight. The Adams went to this play and that play. The Adams got a brand new car. Bert's the new coach of Little League. How do you have time to do that? And now, to top it all off, she tells me the Adams are planning a trip to Hawaii. Next summer? Yeah. Well, I thought the plan was we were both going to work 10 extra hours a week. I do. Well, then how come this is the first time in six months we've gone golfing? You're always working on Sunday morning. Well, you're supposed to be working, too. Joe, I am. It's just that I get to spend my 10 hours at the golf course if I want. And while I'm playing, we get an extra 210 hours of work done somewhere else. Nice shot. Thanks. So, it's really working? You know that trip I took to California last May? Yeah. I met this really sharp guy. Shared the business with him. Uh-huh. He couldn't believe it. You think I'm crazy. He does it full time. Left his job. You're kidding. No. And when Holly went with her sister last July to Washington, D.C., met this old grandma, real sweetheart. Retired, owns the motel she lives in, loves the products, sells them to everybody she meets. We've got people working for us before we get up in the morning and after we go to bed at night. And when we go on vacation, our business keeps on going. Well, so how much are you making? Did we just see a light turn on, or was that my imagination? You know, I think that 10 hours of work for 10 hours of pay idea just lost some of its luster. And you know, Joe's not alone. 